All right, guys, what's going on? Today, we're going to talk about confidently fishing cold fronts. You know, that's the thing we all struggle with, you know. All of us have had days where you can catch them fishing how you want to catch them, and then all of a sudden you got a tournament coming you you know you're going to go fishing again in four or five days and there's been a cold front hit so this is a time of year where i'm gonna say this is the late in the season cold front this is like march april may whenever you have those kind of cold fronts in may in my area we don't have a lot of cold fronts we still have some in march and april though and for the most part it seems like when you get through that april may get later in the year seems like that cold front doesn't really affect the fish as much as you would think that it actually does one thing it does is positions those fish but after a cold front comes through or any type of a front and you're dealing with kind of what we have out here today post frontal conditions there's no clouds in the sky completely bluebird and a lot of people dread this type of fishing i honestly feel like some of the biggest fish i catch are in these exact conditions and there's a reason for that one of the main things that it does is it really seems to position those fish it's kind of they don't get up there and they roam they don't roam they're not actively feeding just running down the bank blowing up on bluegill blowing up on shad which uh, is a very rare thing to see for me anyways but it just seems like these these post frontal conditions really makes those fish lock on to stuff and then not really want to bite so for me i still go pretty fast as far as jumping around spots but i try to fish the spots extremely thoroughly and you know confidence is one of those things you hear in fishing all the time people have their confidence baits they have their confidence lakes they have confidence everything you know like whatever gives you confidence is what's going to make you catch them the best so for me whenever i know those fish are not going to be actively chasing and that's whenever i'm going to want to pick up two or three of my absolute favorite confidence baits that i know are going to get me bites more times than anything else that's what i'm really going to lean in this time of year i'm not going to do anything risky i'm not going to be throwing around big vibrating jigs big spinner bait stuff like that unless i'm in some really stained water especially if there's current flowing then i'll still pick up those those bigger baits but for the most part we're going to talk about just fishing in lakes where you don't have a lot of current and how to fish those confidently so you know late season cold fronts what does that do those fish are trying to move up they're trying to make that move shallow now a lot of the fish in my area are not going to spawn until mid-april late april early may all the way through may so some of those fish are still going to be deep they're still going to be you know relating primarily to bait those offshore drop-offs big channel swing banks all that type of stuff and you can always catch those fish even throughout a cold front now for me one of the baits that i'm going to throw a ton and this right here is, let's see if I can get this without it being tangled. This right here is just a good old fashioned shaky head. This one's got a little bit of a new twist on it. This is the Untamed Tackle, shaking ace actually. But this is one for me that I really, really like to throw in them late season cold fronts for a, one main reason. I can throw this thing in three or four foot of water and I can drag it around isolated wood, isolated stumps, you know, shallow rock. And it's also a bait that I know I can drag out all the way to 20, 23, 25 feet and still get a lot of bites on it. So for me, this is going to be an absolute staple whenever fishing late, late season cold fronts like we have today. You know, those fish that are on those channel swing banks, those last little drop offs, right where that, that deep channel swing rocks turn to a creek channel. A lot of times out there that deep, that's where those fish are going to want to, going to, want to kind of stage and set up. And it, it could be anywhere from eight foot deep where that happens all the way up to 25 foot deep where that happens and they're going to seem to want to be in that deeper water where those bait fish seem to congregate this time of year so the bait fish are going to be spawning here in in a month or two also so those bait fish are also kind of getting into the creeks getting a little bit closer to where they're going to be actually actively spawning here in a few weeks so this is what i'm going to use to make sure that i get some bites i'll also throw some smaller swim baits and stuff like that whenever i'm using my forward face to sonar to actually look at those fish but for the most part if i'm be out here grinding trying to catch big large mouth that are staging this is going to be an absolute killer now this is one that gets you bites and i've caught a lot of really really big ones on a shaky head too everyone has it catches some of the biggest fish you catch all year and it also puts a lot of numbers in the boat but there's going to be one trend with these three baits that i'm going to show i have and it's it's not going to be exactly the same everywhere you live but i fish lakes a lot that have a lot of spotted bass 
and they have a lot of largemouth. And some of these spotted bass, whenever the lakes get tough, you're going to want to catch those because they can be two, two and a half, even some three pound spotted, um, spotted bass can be caught in a lot of these lakes. You know, we regularly are weighing in two and a half to three pounders in a lot of these tournaments. So these are going to be baits that I know if I put it in front of spotted bass, they'll bite. If I put it in front of a big largemouth, they'll bite. So I really like the, the dual threat kind of stuff that's, you know, can catch both all the time. So another really, really good one, and this is one of the ones that I lean on a ton this time of year, is going to be a jig. Usually going to be a half ounce because I want to be able to, I'm not going to really throw this a lot of times up in two, three, four feet of water unless I'm flipping to absolutely isolated cover. You know, shallow brush, lay down trees, stumps, anything like that. That's when I'm going to throw this. But this is a bait that I'm going to flip in those trees. I'm going to flip it on those rocks. I'm going to flip it under the deeper docks, all that type of stuff that's more in that six to 12 foot range. This is a half ounce. This is a untamed tackle ace jig. I designed this, one of the best skipping jigs that I've ever thrown. And that's one of the main reasons I like it. I can skip it up under lay down trees. You know, I can skip it under docks. I can also flip it. It's got a really big hook in it. It's got a really strong hook in it. Not a big hook in it, not an overpowering hook, but a strong hook in it. So this is one of the baits that this time of year, I catch a lot of really, really big ones on especially when we have these cold front conditions. This color right here is Donk. I've just got a small chunk trailer on there. Something I know, like I said, is gonna catch them spotted bass and catch them big large mouse. So this is one that I'm gonna be flipping on them channel swing banks. I'm gonna be flipping on the isolated cover and I'll also be, you know, throwing it, casting it, everything in that mid depth brush. I don't really fish this a lot of times out deeper than, you know, 18, 16, 18, unless I'm seeing a brush pile that's that deep and I watch my bait go down through on the Ford face sonar for so, but for the most part, this is the bait I'm gonna pick up whenever I know that sun's high and those fish are gonna be positioned in that cover the correct way. And then big females that are up kind of waiting to spawn, a lot of times they're gonna position in the heaviest cover close to the spawning flat. So that's a bait that I absolutely lean on in these conditions. Another one for me is got to be a wacky rig you know you throw a lot of different types of baits if i'm fishing really shallow i'll throw a more of like a finesse worm style bait you know get, get a, a five six inch finesse worm throw it it has a extremely slow fall whenever you throw it like that I, that's whatever i feel like those fish have made that push up they're in that foot and a half to five foot range and they're on that isolated cover if i don't think i can get as many bites on the shaky head or the jig I'll pick up an old wacky rig and just go down the bank and I'll, you know, I'll throw it to the shallower rocks, the bluff ends, isolated cover the same. That's going to be one big trend for me whenever you have these bluebird skies is I always want to be as close to the cover as possible. I'm not going to be on them shallow drops where they push bait up to because a lot of times those fish don't seem to be doing that when we have these conditions. So it's going to be for me staying around the cover, staying in places where I know there's, there's fish, you know, like I don't do a lot of risky stuff. I don't try to be fancy in these conditions. I go to places where I know there's a big population of fish. I fish places that I think are the best places on the lake and I fish them with my three most confidence baits that I have. So this is going to be one that catches a lot of big ones, also gets a lot of bites. If they're in that mood, sometimes they seem to not want this. They want that bigger profile of the jig. They want that, you know, dragging on the bottom making that little bit of a mud line that shaky head makes like they like that stuff sometimes and these three baits kind of cover everything that i'm going to do from two feet deep all the way up to 25 foot deep so you could see these three baits there's no reaction baits in there if this was a cold front in let's say november december january february i would be cranking you know dt4s dt6s all that type of stuff the new rocco square bill all that type of stuff is what I would be doing in cold fronts a little bit earlier in the year. But this time of year, I know those fish are, have something else on their mind. They're trying to spawn. They're not actively feeding anymore. And this cold front kind of hits them in the head and positions them on the cover. So I want to pick it apart with these three baits. So that's my approach to confidently tackling these late season cold fronts. So Why, why are they all doing that? Okay, so the colors are basically just because the lakes in my area right now are relatively clear. Like we have two to five or six feet of visibility on all the lakes that I've been fishing. So for me this time of year, I just want to imitate those bluegill the best that I can. It's going to be, you know, green pumpkin, stickworms, 
green pumpkin trick worms and then i've got a bluegill colored jig that's actually called a donk color with a green pumpkin chunk so that that's really just a a deal where the lakes that i'm fishing and the, and the water color is dictating the actual bait color that i'm choosing if i was going to be fishing you know in stained water a lot of times i'd still be throwing black and blues stuff like that you know so but for where i'm at and what i've been doing that's why i green pumpkins but that's going to deviate you know the biggest thing is understanding where those fish are going what baits they'll bite and then kind of deviating from there and picking out which ones they can see the best and the visibility of the water that you have so okay so to make this more complicated we just had a super cold front along with a one foot drop overnight at this small little local lake what does that change so i think it's going to be two things so we did we, we had the water drop almost a foot overnight on this lake right here and we uh have a, have a massive cold front. Those same places, those deeper drops, those channel swing banks, that last deep water in a lot of these creeks, that's gonna be where those fish have to pull off to. Like if those fish do pull off out of this, out of where they were trying to go, they have to get on that little bit of deeper water right there. They have to get on these isolated cover out in the middle of these flats that are you know out in six, seven feet of water. That's the type of places that they're gonna always move to when you have two things pushing them out. So that's definitely, you know, an, another factor that's going to help these three baits. Anything else, Miss Hunter? That's it. So that's how I would tackle a cold front this time of year. You know, the fish are trying to get up there spawning. Like I said, if it was a little bit colder, a little bit more reaction baits, but it's not. Those fish are kind of over that hump and they're trying to move up there and they're trying to start spawning, but then they got hit in the head two times by the water dropping and by the cold front. So. I'm sure a lot of y'all have the same confidence baits. If y'all don't and y'all have a different bait that y'all feel like kind of muscles y'all through a cold front, let me know because we deal with this on tour quite often. Seems like every single tournament we seem to have a cold front and I'm always looking for more baits to make me more efficient on the water. So if y'all have got a bait that's a big confidence bait for y'all, let me know what it is in the comments. I appreciate y'all watching. But I'm gonna see if we can't hit a big old spot of bass in the head and try to catch us one of these three pounders that's out here because there's some big ones out here.